Welcome to Heartland Makes and Outdoors. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the new bike. Yes, it's new bike day. It's springtime here in East Texas. So let's get to the video. With spring in the air, we thought it would be fun to go ahead and add a new bike to our channel. The new GT Zaskar LT Elite. That's a mouthful, guys, and you may even be asking yourself, what does Zaskar even mean? Well, I had to look it up because I didn't know either, but Zaskar is a mountain range over in Asia. After all, a bike being named after a mountain range, it should be rock solid. In today's video, we're going to go over some of the pros, the cons. We're going to do a mini dive into the initial thoughts of this bike. We've had it roughly three weeks. I've got about 75 miles on it already. And we're also going to go into a deep dive and I'm going to answer the question, would I buy this again? Yes or no? Let's quickly go over some of the specs that I was looking for when I was getting ready to make this purchase. Number one, I wanted a hardtail. I wanted an aluminum frame. One that was relatively lightweight, didn't weigh a ton, and something that would be flickable and fun. If a lot of you are already looking at a hardtail, you already know that it's one of the easier ways to get back into mountain biking, especially if it's been a while since you've ridden a bike. It'll also be cheaper to get in than a full suspension bike, and you can generally end up with some better components at a more affordable price than if you was looking at a full suspension bike. Basically, a hardtail is just like it sounds. This is one solid frame. There's no suspension in the middle of the bike and you will have a front suspension on this bike. So of the criteria that I was looking for when I purchased this bike, I wanted it to have five things. One, number one, I wanted it to have a good derailleur and gears on it. This is a SRAM XE Eagle drivetrain, which means that it's a 12 speed in the rear and a single on the front. That is less complications and generally makes it quieter out in the woods. So I was fully confident that the SRAM drivetrain would be adequate for our needs. The next thing on the list that was very important to me is I wanted to make sure that the bike had good disc brakes. These disc brakes that come on this GT bike are made by a company called Tektro. They make really good equipment. They, it's, it's definitely going to meet or exceed all the demands that I'd be putting on it is basically a trail bike. These are mineral oil brakes, which means that it's going to be real easy to keep them maintained. If it's been a while since you've ridden a bike or a mountain bike in general, one other thing that was very important to me is I wanted to make sure it had a dropper seat post. If you're not familiar with the way the dropper seat post work, as you can see, it's in the low position now. So if you stop and want to say, get your phone out and take some pictures, or maybe you're like me and you enjoy photography and video and you want to do some video or something like that, having the dropper seat post where it'll come down to a more natural sitting height makes it a great stool. So now you've got a bike that you can use as a stool, you can roll in, you can visit with your buddies or whatever else. And then when you get ready to ride and you start pedaling off, after you adjust it to yourself, when the seat comes up, it'll be at the proper height. <laughs> or that's the way they're supposed to work anyways. We will get a little more into that part of this mini review in a minute. So be sure to stick around because you're gonna want to hear this. It's actually comical. And then lastly, one of the things that was very important to me was going to be the front fork. Your front fork is really the only amount of suspension you're going to have on your hardtail besides your legs and your body. And when I was looking at this bike, I was comparing it with two other bikes, and I did not realize that this RockShox fork was a coil fork when I made the purchase, and that was an oversight on my part. But again, it is a good quality fork. It's made by the company named RockShox. If you guys are a big heavy guy like me, I'm six foot, 200 pounds. The spring that comes in this fork is a little bit too light. If you go on their website, you can actually enter in your serial number and they will show you that they've got four different spring rakes for this fork. I need the extra firm. I watched another video on YouTube where a gentleman did it. He said, get the, he said, get the replacement spring for the rock shock dominion. And there is no such fork. All right. So let's do a 
deep dive into the bike and what I like about it, the pros and cons and some things that would sway my decision one way or another as to whether or not I'd buy this bike again. Again, this bike is the GT Zaskar Elite. Here's your, here's your fun definition. I've already told you at the beginning of this video that the Zaskar is a mountain range in Asia. The Urban Dictionary says Zaskar is a little person who's a little disobedient as well as obstinate from time to time. And I'm paraphrasing, guys. You can look it up on the. Uh, <laughs> you can look it up on the. On the, in the Urban Dictionary and read it for yourself. But basically, I think that actually fits this bike a little bit better, and I'm going to explain to you why. I didn't mention it in the top five reasons because everybody's going to assume that your bike's going to have wheels and tires. The wheels and tires that come on this bike are actually a nice set. I don't have any complaints with them. I'm really pleased with the SRAM drivetrain that it has. Again, SRAM makes quality products and even the ones that are on this bike are not anything compared to what they're putting out. They're top of the line today. Just like everything else in life, the better the technology has trickled down into the more consumer uh, affordable type stuff. One thing I do want to talk about quickly and that is the pricing. If you haven't priced a bike in a while, I can tell you my synopsis of what's happened over the last couple of years. Between the pandemic, a lot of people buying bikes, a lot of people ran out of bikes, your bike shops and stuff like that, they couldn't keep anything in stock. All, you, all your big manufacturers were able to ramp up production to the point that bicycle sales kind of leveled off and now there's so many bikes that are built and ready to go and there just isn't as many people buying them like there were two years ago. So what that means for you is this. This is the perfect time to be buying especially a new mountain bike or any kind of bike for that matter because there's so many people that still since way before Black Friday sales started happening people were putting bikes like this one. I got it for 45% off. This bike retailed for like $1,800. And the sale price through Jensen took it to like, let's just say 989, 990, something like that. So my part of my goal with buying this hardtail is I wanted a bike under $1,000 with, again, everything on it being something that you could go and buy and ride for many years to come and basically be problem free. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and we're going to talk a little bit more about the Urban Dictionary definition of this bike. And this is where it gets a little more complicated. My first complaint right off the bat, like I told you I mentioned, was an oversight on my part. I did not want a coil spring fork. However, I'll tell you some of the pros with the coil spring fork. With a coil fork, you don't have to worry about your air pressure. You don't need a, a fork pump to pump it up and regulate and keep an eye on it. So, I mean, there are some things that make it kind of fun in the sense that you can just jump on this bike go ride, you're not worried about your suspension changing from ride to ride or anything like that, especially if you're going up into different altitudes or temperature changes, your cool fork's still gonna be the same cool fork it was last week. That's one of the pros. The thing that I don't like about it is being spoiled to an air fork, you can go in there and you can customize it and make it fit you and, and you get, it's something that you get used to. So it's a little more, in my mind, it's a better way to perform a more specific to you change in your front fork as opposed to just a generic coil that you drop in and it's what you got. So that was my fault by overlooking that. I would not have bought this bike if I had realized it had the coil fork and even though RockShox makes quality products. The next thing that I want to address is the dropper post. The dropper post for this bike that comes on this bike is inadequate. It doesn't work right. You ride it for about 10 minutes and sometimes two minutes and, the, and the, actually it decreases its volume and shrinks down about an inch. Sometimes it'll shrink down three inches and you can push the button. It'll go back up. But you have to continually do that the whole time you're riding. So if you're trying to ride 10 miles up and down different terrain, you are you don't even feel it. It's, it happens so lightly. <laughs> well, 
most of the time you don't even feel it. It just happens as you're riding and then you, uh, you just kind of have to get into a habit of going ahead and pushing you the button and raising it back up when you're standing because it's going to drop down every time. In my mind that for an $1,800 bike, and again, I'm not knocking GT. I don't know. I don't even know who the manufacturer is on this dropper seat post. So I'm just telling you that if you're spending, especially if you don't get it on sale and you spent that $1,800, I would be very upset that the dropper seat post doesn't work correctly. Again, this bike I purchased through Jensen. I haven't reached out to them and even asked them about this dropper seat post because in my mind I thought I'd just buy a better one. P&W makes a good one. They're on sale right now for about $100. Um, and that's if I even upgrade it at all. But I'm just telling you, there's two quirks with the seat posts. The number one, the dropper seat post drops and then I'll zoom in on this so you guys can see this, but there's a significant, or in my mind, a pretty good wiggle with this dropper seat post. And you can go look at other quality dropper seat posts. There may be a smidge of movement in it, but this one's actually pretty big in my mind. It's not gonna affect riding the bike at all. I just think it's a little cheesy, just like the dropper seat post not working is a little cheesy. The next thing, that you might want to look at replacing the grips. They're just regular old grips. There's nothing fancy about these. And I have upgraded the grips. I just haven't put them on here. I wanted to make this video before I put them on and I got some for like 25 bucks on sale. Again, that's you're kind of nitpicking when you start talking about the grips and stuff like that. Overall, the bike, I like. It's a good, it, the frame seems to be really good, solid. I don't think there'll be any problems there. I can picture if I was going to keep this bike for a long time that I would end up upgrading the coil fork to something better. That's where you start running into a lot of money because a good like Fox fork is going to cost you five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars and that's if you can get it on sale. With this bike having the tapered head tube, it's going to make it a lot easier to find a fork that would fit this from your major manufacturers. We already know RockShox make them because this is a RockShox fork. So RockShox or Fox or any of them that you would want, either one of the big names that you would want to potentially upgrade to should be a fairly easy fix. Again, I don't plan on doing that with this bike. I bought this bike on purpose because I'm going to use it more for trail riding. I'm going to take it camping with me. As part of this in-depth review, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this one other little quirk that I don't particularly care for on this bike. And that is the quick connect skewer on the rear end of the bike. On the front, it's a through axle. And typically, if you're gonna take your bike apart to try to put it in your trunk or something like that, it's a lot easier just if you had a quick disconnect on the front to take the front wheel off, turn your handlebars, shove it in the back seat, and then be on about your business. The quirk for me, and I'll zoom in on this so you can see it, they've got the quick, quick disconnect down here on the rear axle. And it's happened to me twice now where I'll be pedaling along, minding my own business, and I hear something that kind of pops or bangs, and you're like, ooh, that don't sound right. Stop the bike. And then the little quick connect skewer is dangling down, and it just comes loose for whatever reason. Now, it could be something that I'm doing wrong, or it could just be maybe there's a flaw with it but I wish that it was more like the front axle with a, tighten it down with a regular Allen wrench because I'm honestly, I don't like taking the rear wheel off. Your chances of, especially if you're transporting the bike, your chances of <laughs> bending your, your uh, rear derailleur hanger is greatly increased without that wheel on there, kind of somewhat protecting it from any kind of <laughs> vibrations or movements or something falling over on it and I, and I wouldn't take it off unless that was my only option. I've had to do that. I have had to do that to put it in the back seat of a car. Again, I don't like doing that, but it doesn't make any sense to me why you would have a regular axle up front and the quick release on the back and for whatever reason, I don't know if it's from riding downstairs or whatever kind of goofy stuff I've been doing with this bike, riding it in an urban environment, but that's came loose twice. And that's something, if you do have this bike, you want to keep an eye on it. If you do buy this bike, keep an eye on it. And it may, after more time, again, I've only got, I've only had the bike about three weeks and I've got about 75 miles on it. It's loosened up twice. And that's something that you're going to need to pay attention to. And, and guys, if you've got this bike, let me know in the comments down below, have you had the same issue? 
with that. <laughs> I, I don't know why it's on there. I'd rather it just be like a, it doesn't make any sense to me. And that brings us up to would I buy the bike again? No, I wouldn't. And here's why. And we're going to go into the we're going to go into the office and I'm going to show you a couple of different bikes that I'm really excited about. And then I'm going to introduce you to another company that I think probably has the best bang for the buck there is. And I'll explain to you why. So let's, let's go ahead and go inside. I'm going to show you the other bikes. And again, I wished I would have found these bikes before I purchased this one. So starting right now, one of the other bikes that I would seriously look at instead of buying this bike is the Polygon Estrada. Seven hardtail mountain bike. It's got a lot of similar components as this, as the GT does. It comes in this color, and it also comes in a charcoal and gray, which I think is really cool. Now it is a little bit more expensive, but you're right there with the same price. The only thing that this bike does not come with is a dropper post, and to me that isn't going to be a make or break deal. You're still getting the WT Trail Boss tires, just like what comes on on the GT that we have. It's also got really good, um, I believe this is SRAM or Shimano drivetrain, so it's going to be really good and very comparable. And again, I'm not going to take credit off because the dropper seat post that comes on the GT is, is not worth having anyway. So again, you could get it in the other color and it's $8.99 for $50 more. You can get it with the, the gray color. Now, the company that I'm most excited to tell you about, and you guys have probably heard about them in the past, and that is Ari. Ari used to be Vizari. They've recently changed their name. We're gonna go over to their website. We're gonna look at their bikes. This Wasatch Peak. Wasatch Peak, very similar components and everything. This bike starts at $8.99. They do have it on sale. And as you can scroll down here, you can see that it comes in this green color, similar to the bike that we have. And it also comes in this gray. If it was me, I'd pick the gray just simply because I think it would look cool. But their green looks as good as this bike does. I like the greens too. So, I mean, it would just be a matter of what you wanted. But it is nice that you could get it in two different colors. Again, Ari doesn't even know we exist. So it's not like they're cutting me any kind of break. But I can show you here on this page right here, the 27 and a half inch wheel size is $899 with a $400 savings right now. The 29 inch, which is this next one, it's $1299. But it does come with a dropper seat post that work. It also, they're gonna, there's some really cool things about this company. They will build this bike for you. Again, you can pick it in the green or the gray. But they will actually, when you go in and pick your size medium, you come down here and it says custom fit. You can click on this button over here where it says custom fit and it'll walk you through measuring all your stuff, your height and inches and everything else. And they're going to build the bike to fit you from the factory. Again, Ari doesn't even know that this channel exists. They don't even know anything about us. But my next bike that I buy will more than likely be one from this company just because I believe in them. And if you watch any other videos that they've put out recently, Ari is a fun name. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Go over and check it out. I'll put a link down below so that you can go over and watch their videos. But again, guys, if you had a couple of hundred dollars extra and if you're looking at buying this bike in particular, the GT, I can tell you up front, the dropper seat post doesn't work. And by the time you go and buy one, and we can go over here and look. Uh, here's a good example, this race face turbine dropper seat post, currently 64% off, and this is from Jensen for 109. And then the other one I found on Amazon, which is PNW, it's a dropper seat post for 119. And by the time you start adding that up, you're only $100 difference of buying a much, in my mind, a much better bike, simply because they're gonna build it to fit you. It's going to be custom built from the factory. They're going to ship it to you, but all you should have to do is bolt on the handlebars, put the wheels and tires on, or, or put the wheel sets on, and you should be able to go ride worry-free and everything work. I just think it's worth looking into. 
and that is one of the reasons I would not buy this GT over again. All right, with that said about the Sun Tour fork on the other two bikes, whether you're looking at either one of those that I just showed you, the one thing that you may not know, the one thing that you may not know is Sun Tour has an upgrade program. So if you're the original owner of the bike and the Sun Tour fork, and you decide you want to upgrade to the Sun Tour's mega air fork, and I don't even know what it would be, guys, because I'm not, I'm not a Sun Tour salesman but i'm assuming they've got higher grades of them if you decided you wanted to upgrade that fork you can actually mail it in and they'll give you a discount towards your new fork guys if you like our video give us a big thumbs up if you found it interesting at all please think about subscribing down below you know anybody that's thinking about getting into mountain biking or or just biking in general we're not going to be doing hardcore stuff you're not going to see me at a red bull event but what you are going to see is if you guys know, I've got another channel and it's a dual sport channel. I've been riding mountain bikes off and on for the last 15, 20 years. And it's another way that I enjoy getting out, getting close to nature, hunting off of them, fishing off of them, just getting out in nature. But it also helps you stay in shape. It will also help you become a better motorcyclist if that's what you're... If, if you ride motorcycles, especially the dual sports, any of that stuff, you're going to be more physically fit to go out and tackle those single tracks for sure. Again, we appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. May you have a blessed week. And let's get outside and make something happen. Four feet on the stripes in the Alabama highway.